Okay, so we're going to get this going here in three, two, and one. I am actually shocked and amazed that I'm able to even get this video done for you. It has been a scramble since I got back last week to get ready for this upcoming weekend. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on, and I've got a few reminders for you. For, so we're just going to jump right in. Um, I, I've got to stop. I hope you had a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So I want to get that. Happy New Year wishes off to all of you right out of the top. And so now let's jump right in and see what's going on, what's coming up for you this coming weekend here in our Lay Formation program. Uh, for you year one candidates, we're just going to run through the list like we normally do. Uh, you have got Father Gary Kuntz coming in to talk with you about the basic principles of Christian morality. So we've got four kind of pillars of Christian life, four pillars actually that we speak about in our catechism um, of the Catholic Church. Uh, the first one is the sacred scriptures. Uh, that's our story of salvation. The second one is our sacramental life and worship. And the third one, the third one has to do with our Christian living, living the Christian life. And that's where these principles of Christian morality come in. The fourth pillar of our church, fourth pillar of our faith in, in the catechism is prayer. That's our life with God, our prayer life with God, which informs all of those other areas of Christian life. And so Father Gary is going to come in and zero in on this area of living a Christian moral life and the basic principles of morality for you. Uh, for you year two candidates, you've got uh, my good friend Matt Nelson coming in to spend the whole morning with you on Saturday uh, talking about apologetics. Apologetics. Now, apologetics is that particular discipline uh, that invites us to enter into dialogues about the faith. So it's really dialoguing about particular questions um, in the faith. It's, uh, we, it's not apologizing for anything that we've done wrong. And it's also not entering into um, heated discussions about aspects of the faith with other people. But it's really a discipline that invites us to um, think about and speak with others about the faith in very reasoned and logical ways. So it will, I think, be a very enlightening day for you with Matt. Uh, he does a lot of really good work on apologetics. Uh, he writes for Bishop Barron's Word on Fire online ministry. So you'll find, um, you'll find his stuff at Word on Fire uh, on some of their blogs. He has his own blog, uh, reasonablecatholic.com, and he's done a lot of work with Catholic Answers and their podcasts, especially uh, in the States. Uh, so he comes to us, actually a local boy from Shaunavan, Saskatchewan, and so I think you're going to enjoy uh, spending that time with Matt uh, on the 13th. For you year three candidates, you have got a really interesting presentation with uh, a new friend of mine, uh, Spurgeon Root, and he may bring some of his family with him uh, and some guests with him. Spurgeon I met in November with the Deacon Formation Program. He did a presentation with his family um, on the Healing Hearts Ministry that he and his family belong to. He's a pastor for Healing Hearts Ministry, which operates in the inner city of Regina um, in north, the north central neighborhood. Uh, him and his family made the ministerial and vocational choice very early on in their, in their vocations to live within the, the north central area that they minister to. Uh, and he's going to speak a bit about that and the unique kind of ministry that they offer to those who are on the fringes. Um, this is a very uh, exciting opportunity for us to enter into ecumenical partnerships with uh, our brothers and sisters of other Christian faiths, such as Spurgeon and his family, and to do, as we talked about with Bishop Don last time, um, last weekend when he was out with us, to really look at those areas of ministry and mission that we can share together as Christians and recognize our, really, our obligation to do so. Uh, over and above all of that, he will offer you some very interesting perspectives 
on what it is we do and ought to do when we're ministering to the poor. So I think you're going to really enjoy that um, on Saturday morning. Uh, for your ones in Saturday afternoon, you have got, again, my friends James and Holly Gustafson coming out to talk to you about the sacrament of marriage. They're going to spend some time talking with you about that sacrament that's really our core kind of sacrament of Christ within the domestic church, the family, and how important that is uh, for us to recognize and acknowledge and really use the graces, activate those graces of that sacrament, that sacramental encounter with Christ in our homes, our families, and our neighborhoods. Uh, so I think uh, that'll be a great presentation with them. And then year threes, you're going to have a blast in the afternoon. You've got Joan Pratchler coming out, who is just a riot to spend time with. She is a very wonderful and intelligent lady who has such a deep and profound passion for liturgical music and the liturgy in general uh, that she is so excited to share with you. Uh, you. If you've met her before, if you've heard her around when she's doing presentations for a program before, you'll know she is just uh, an effervescent and bubbly personality, but boy, does she know her stuff when it comes to liturgical music. So, uh, so you're going to have a great afternoon with Joan uh, and on the 13th. Uh, Saturday evening is going to be a lot of fun. It is our New Year's social evening. So if you would like to bring any baked goods or snacks to share for that evening um, or beverages and that to share for that evening, by all means do so. You know that our rule whenever we're bringing in snacks and beverages is whatever you bring in, you're responsible for taking with you when you go. Okay, so we want to make that clear right off the start, right off the bat. But we're gonna gather together that evening um, to have some really important time to socialize and and just spend some time ringing in the new year together. I know I'm gonna bring some games to play. Uh, so I've already had some requests from people to bring particular games that I brought last time, and uh, it would just be a time for us to really enjoy each other and the gift that each other are from God. Uh, so that's going to be our Saturday evening. On the morning of the 14th, for year one participants, you've got Bonnie Teeley Hunt coming out to talk to you about eschatology. You're going to see that word on your um, schedules and you're going to be wondering, what the heck is eschatology? It is going to be extremely interesting. Eschatology is that study or that discussion of all of the end times kind of things that raise a lot of questions and can be very fruitful areas for discussion. Things like heaven, hell, and purgatory especially all have to do with eschatology as well as what our what we would call our ultimate destiny is as human persons you know we know we were created for a reason and for a purpose and eschatology helps us to understand what that purpose is and how it all kind of works so if you've ever had questions about or had questions posed to you about what happens when you die. What might heaven be like? How do we talk about hell and why are we even in the 21st century even still talking about hell? And what's this purgatory thing all about? You're going to love that morning with Bonnie Teeley, okay? Uh, for our year two candidates, we've got Bert Pitzel coming out to talk to you. Um, that second component of his social justice kind of series that he does with participants through your course in the program. And so he's going to come out and spend some time with you talking about social justice issues. Uh, and for your year three candidates, we've got a very special kind of mini retreat planned for you on Sunday morning. This is part of that discernment process. Um, it's what we call our Potter Reflection. And it's an invitation to spend some time looking at how and where God has been and continues to mold and shape you and to remold and reshape you through your participation in this lay formation program. 
all right so that is your weekend in a little little nutshell i know that you're all as excited as i am always for these weekends to come up uh, and so I'm looking forward to sharing all of this stuff with you. Now we get to the reminders and the big number one reminder that uh, I really want to hammer home with everybody is the visit of my personal patron saint, St. Francis Xavier. Uh, really evangelist extraordinaire. His first class relic, that of his uh, right forearm coming to visit uh, and be venerated at Resurrection Parish here in the city um, on Saturday, January 20th. Saturday, January 20th. You're going to want to mark that on your calendars right now. So I'll just wait. You take out, you kind of put that, yeah, mark it in. Okay, you got that down there. Saturday, January 20th. It's going to start with a 10 a.m. Mass with Archbishop Donald Bolin. Uh, after the Mass and for the bulk of the day, uh, the parish will be open for public veneration and there will be priests on hand to hear confessions throughout that day. So you'll have an opportunity to spend some time in prayer with the relic of St. Francis Xavier and bring to Francis um, and ask his particular intercessions for any areas of need in your life or the lives of your family. In particular, we pray for, for um, we're praying for particular graces um, with this visit of the relic. Uh, we're praying for a renewal in minister, missionary zeal in our diocese and in ourselves. We're praying for a conversion of hearts for those who are maybe on the fringes of our faith or outside of our faith, that they might, through the graces of Jesus Christ, experience a real transformative conversion, and that we ourselves might be open to ongoing transformative conversion in Jesus Christ. And finally, um, the St. Francis Xavier was well known for a number of healings and even some raising of the dead. And we are praying for... And, and invited to bring forward any particular needs of healing that you might have or might be had in your family, okay? Uh, and so that's, um, that's what you can do during that public veneration time. At 5 p.m., Resurrection Parish has its regular Saturday evening Mass, and you're certainly welcome to attend that as well. Uh, things pick up again right after the Mass with some more opportunity for veneration. Uh, and at 7 o'clock, there is a specific program. Um, of the sp speaking program. Uh, we'll have, I believe it's Father John O'Brien, who led your retreat last month, will be speaking about the relic itself and about St. Francis Xavier, a little bit about his life and his mission and his ministry. Uh, and then we'll also have some guests there sharing their own personal testimonies. And I want to highlight this for all of you uh, in the program because you know that by the end of by by our last meeting in June You'll have to submit to me a 300 word personal testimony And now you might be struggling with that and thinking well How am I going to take a particular experience that I've had of Jesus Christ in my life of Jesus Christ in this particular program? If that's a basis of of testimony that you feel called to offer and how am I going to communicate that in 300 words or less about three to four minutes minutes. Well, if you come on that Saturday evening, the 20th at seven o'clock, you're going to have three different people offering their very brief but very powerful personal testimonies, and you'll be able to see how it's done. So I'd highly recommend you come out for that. Um, just for that alone, I think it would be of great value for anybody in our lay formation program. Uh, and after this talk and, and testimonies, veneration will continue until 10 o'clock when the event ends. So I really want to encourage all of you uh, to come out and encourage, and encourage you to, to invite friends and family to this event. Uh, this is a remarkable opportunity for evangelization, for those personal invitations to just come out and see, come out and spend some time in prayer and reflection and contemplation. Uh, so I want to invite you to do that. Um, you can actually hear more about the relic and its visit. I actually had an opportunity to interview a couple of my good friends, Pierre and Laura O'Reilly. Some of you will remember them because they've um, taught classes in our program before. Uh, and they were in, they're, they're really the, the leads on our um, relic 
uh, event uh, coordination team and they were in our recording studio just which is essentially this space here in my office uh, just a couple weeks ago we got to talk all about St. Francis Xavier and this visit of the relic so I would direct you to www.artregina.sk.ca slash thinking faith and you'll find, I think, this week at least, it is the second podcast on the list as you go down because we released a new one this week, um, and so, and this one was released just last week. So you're going to take a look at that, and a really, uh, really great interview. They're a great couple. Uh, we had a, a lot of good fun um, with that podcast. So there's the relic stuff. Two more reminders, and we're done. Okay? Reminder number one. As we talked about <laughs> with the relic stuff, you all have personal testimonies that you have to put together for this year. And I want to give you, start off the new year by reminding you that you've got until June to put those together. Remember, we want to keep those to 300 words or less, okay? 300 words or less. Last year, I had a little bit of leeway. We had some people hand in, like, um, I had a couple of handed in, like, a page of personal testimony. And that... Uh, and I just kind of, it was a new thing that we were doing. I want to really keep, um, keep it firm at the 300 words. It's a good challenge for us to think about how we would communicate a particular experience that we've had of Jesus Christ in a short amount of time to somebody else. Because we don't often have a lot of time to share our profound experiences with Christ. And in fact, the more time we take to share those, the less engaging it really is with other people, right? And the less chances there will be for them to think, oh, you know, I might ask, I might ask so-and-so about Christ again sometime. Or, you know, they didn't really, they, they, they had some really good things to say the last time we talked, um, and, and I might want to talk to them again. Uh, that's a particular gift that um, that results from keeping our testimonies um, concise and powerful. Okay, so I want to, um, and you have an outline of how to do this. I've given you outlines on on how to put together a testimony. Your twos and threes. You've had a particular presentation about this from Pierre O'Reilly uh, on how to do a personal testimony, and so. Uh, you've got a really good foothold. For year ones, we're having you do this because it will give you some material to work with with Pierre when he presents to you next year, okay? So I want you to really kind of put some, some effort into that, and uh, I always look forward to, to receiving these as they come in um, throughout the year. Uh, the last thing is your study projects, which are due by, again, our last meeting in June. If you haven't already done so, by now you should have chosen a topic that you're gonna do your study project on. That can be a book uh, that is in an area of interest that you have uh, with respect to the faith. It can be perhaps a movie or a DVD study series. Um, it may be a study series that's being done in your parish that you wanna take um, part in and do uh, a very brief reflection on. Uh, it could be a particular, and this is um, this is another area I want to stress with you, it could be a particular area of Christian ministry and service that you feel called to try out, to be to be involved in. And, um, and you can participate in that particular ministry or that particular service and then just spend a little bit of time doing the same kind of reflection that you would do uh, from, for one of our weekends, okay? And for all of you, your personal study project, that's all I'm looking for is the same kind of reflection on whatever it is that you've done some additional study on that you would offer for a weekend. So a single page, double spaced, is all that I'm requiring. You can do more, but no more than three pages, really, okay? Uh, I always joke, <laughs> kind of tongue in cheek. If I get more than three pages, I'm just gonna pull the extra pages off and toss them out, all right? I'm only gonna read the three pages. Uh, now that's a little bit of a joke, but um, I wanna keep it limited to, to about three pages, but you only have to submit one page double spaced on, on some personal study. Now that's only for year twos and threes. Year ones, you've got your study project. That's to complete the Bible reading um, that you began right away in September. And so I'm expecting probably most of you will probably be done that soon. For all of you, whenever you're done your study projects, 
turn them into me right away. Uh, that avoids kind of the mad rush in June, uh, and it, uh, which can really back things up. And this June is especially going to be uh, hectic for me, and so it would be a really good um, gift that you could give to me is to have your study projects and testimonies done a little bit earlier than June. Uh, and why is this June going to be hectic? Well, if, if all goes well, God willing, and, and if your prayers for me and just, <laughs> that I've been asking for over these last number of years take hold, if they take root, if they stick, right, then on June 15th of this year, uh, I will be ordained into the permanent diaconate. And so it's going to make for a very interesting end of the year for, for myself and juggling a lot of stuff all at once. Uh, but I want to invite you to mark your calendars down for June 15th. That's a Saturday uh, and uh, I believe it's a Saturday. Uh, it's uh, I didn't check, so uh, but it's June fifteenth for sure. Uh, and so mark your calendars down for that. And uh, I will be putting together probably some official invitations for everyone uh, that I'll I'll get to you later on and share more details about times and kind of how the, that particular event is going to going to play out as I get that information because I still don't have anything other than the date itself right now either. Uh, so that's that's about it. That's what I've got for you today. And uh, I can't believe that we managed to get it done. So I uh, look forward always to spending these weekends with you and uh, look forward to uh, celebrating our New Year's uh, celebration on Saturday night. So God bless and take care and continue to pray for me as I continue to pray for you. Amen.